I'm excited. Hi. Let me make sure my mic is working. Yes. Okay. Welcome to A Moment in Time with Taylor. Thanks for being here. If you don't know, I do go live on Periscope, Twitter Live, every single day, seven days a week, for three hours a day. Chris, thank you for the super hearts, filling up the tip jar right off the bat. I didn't even get to say hello to you yet. I'm also live right now on YouTube. I do these book reviews typically both on YouTube and on Periscope, so make sure you're subscribed and following both platforms. It's a little bit easier to find replays on YouTube because I have things organized via playlist. Uh, it's also a little bit easier to actually search things out in their search bar than it is on Periscope. So make sure you're on both. Uh, Matthew, first comment to the broadcast, player pro, hi Cher. <laughs> Chris, first super hearts to the broadcast. We got Lou here, Cher changed her profile picture. I can barely recognize her. I gotta get used to the new picture. I love it. Thank you for inviting your followers and retweeting Lou. This is definitely gonna be a good one. I encourage you guys to share this out if you have a lot of friends or family or some kind of network that is interested in improving their mindset, being positive people. All of my broadcasts are intended to have a positive air to them. I do go live every single day, seven days a week, and I am a work in progress. I'm not perfect, so I do my best. And today I think there will be some really, really good golden nuggets out of, that I got from this book, which is called Mindset, The New Psychology of Success, How We Can Learn to Fulfill Our Potential by Carol S. Dweck. She's a PhD, she's a psychologist, and she is the woman who basically created and discovered the concept of a growth mindset, which now, believe it or not, <laughs> Blue. Um, is actually being taught in elementary schools and probably many other age groups as well. So my kids are in early elementary school and they come home with growth mindset worksheets where they have to color in the thought bubbles outside of a brain that, that show a growth mindset or a fixed mindset. So they color the ones that are growth mindset. So this is actually being taught in schools, which I'm so happy about because I don't remember learning about this when I was in school. I'm almost 30 years old at the time of recording this video. And uh, yeah, I never heard about this until relatively recently. So I am a psychology student. I am a full-time student. I take online classes. I intend to become a psychologist myself. So I love books like this. If you have book recommendations like this one for me, please either leave it in the comments here on YouTube or message them to me on Twitter, on Instagram, my email address, everything's on my website, nextjuice.com. Speaking of which, big shout out to all of these beautiful souls. I love you so much and appreciate you so much for making this channel possible. These are the contributions that have come in via the website over the last 30 days. And I just wanted to make sure I take a moment to recognize you guys because I wouldn't be here, wouldn't be able to be sharing this information and doing this with you guys if not for them so if you see them in the chat or you see them on social media somewhere please say thank you to them from all of us for making this little corner of the internet so shiny and juicy so let's get into the book here the little orange jar yeah that's where when you send super hearts they fill up thank you player pro i appreciate that Lou said he wishes he had friends. Well, I'm your friend, Lou. Whether you like it or not, we are friends. <laughs> Lou also said when he went to school, they didn't even have books. They just had stone tablets and chisels. <laughs> uh, and if you don't know, in case you haven't noticed, you know, my, my bookshelf back there, I love to read. I love reading all... I love to read all types of nonfiction books, personal development, psychology, finance, investment, business, pretty autobiographies, biographies, all that kind of stuff, um, historical, uh, historical nonfiction, like actual history books. I love all that stuff. So I, my intention here with this channel is not only to spread positivity, but also to bring my love of books and knowledge and learning to the mainstream where you guys don't have to read all these books. You can just get the golden nuggets from me from reading them. So this week was this past week. It's February 26th today, 2020, when I'm recording this video. And I, it, we just finished yesterday was the last day of National Library Week here in America. So from Sunday to Saturday, we celebrated National Library Week which is one of my favorite weeks of the year because I love the library, I love free books, I love books in general, and I love the whole concept of libraries, which kind of came around during the Carnegie time period, which I learned in his autobiography, uh, Andrew Carnegie, highly recommended if you like this type of content. I'm um, actually just gonna turn that off. I have a space heater blowing on me and I'm sweating. 
so public libraries, really cool things. If you don't have a library card, once this pandemic and social distancing and quarantine lightens up at least enough that libraries are open, I encourage you to get a library card. If you don't have one, go to your local library, look around at all the books, pick something that calls to you, and you can usually take it out of your local library for at least 30 days. You can usually renew your book, the books that you have out right online and if it's a brand new book it's usually at least two weeks that you can have it out and you might not be able to renew it but any older books you can have for probably like almost three months so it gives you lots of time to read see if you like it see if it's something you want to own and have on your own bookshelf at home or if you want to get the ebook or the audiobook you know whatever works for you it's all about reading and learning this past week which I'm a total geek about so my intention is to read these books and then share them with you guys so you don't have to read them but you can still learn the things from them that I learn because I view them as like mentors so I don't know this woman personally but I would love to be mentored by her and learn from her and her her studies so I can just read her book where she summarizes and goes into a lot of detail on her studies and her experiences and her takeaways and I can learn without having to even interact with her face to face. And that is some of the most powerful impact that books have on the world. I really do believe that. Hi, Kochan. No, Stephen King. I'm not really into fiction. I'm not trying to criticize anyone who does. I personally, it's just not my, my preference. And Chloe's booing me already. Wow. One day in a row. You know what, Lou? You said I brushed my hair yesterday, too. So that's actually two days in a row. But I do brush my hair every day, even though Lou always says that I don't. When the quarantine's over, I'm putting in an application at the library I missed out before. Yes, Dutchie, you're putting in an application like you actually want to work there? That's pretty cool. I love that. I've never worked at a library before. I do talk fast. I'm sorry. I think on YouTube you can slow me down. You can, you know, on the replay, I think you can <laughs> slow it down to like half speed. <laughs> Aw, I love you guys. Oh, hang on. Hang on. We interrupt this broadcast to do a little sleuthing. Okay. Lou, you said that. Okay, it doesn't matter because we're not here to talk about whether or not I brush my hair. Nobody cares about that. Yes, share. The love is working. <laughs> We've been reading a love mantra every day on the channel. Hi, Bill. You lost your scope channel. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, I had I saw that notification um, on my website from you from a couple days ago. I was wondering what was going on. Um, what do you mean you lost it? What did it say? Did you email them? Let me, I'm going to put it in the chat on YouTube. Email help at periscope.tv. Um, they should be able to get your, your account back as long as you weren't doing anything naughty because you are wild. It's right in your username, Wild Bill. <laughs> I'm sure you weren't doing anything wrong though. So um, sometimes they have algorithms that like if you if you don't broadcast, I think they're a little bit more like wary of if you're a real person or not. I mean, people get shut down all the time for no good reason. So you can either still watch on Twitter or you can create a new account or you can email them and get, try to get your account back. Thank you, Cher. This is my block list. This is how much I paid them to leave me alone. Just kidding. Thank you, Chloe. <laughs> I was going to work at the library before. I wanted to read all the books. That would be so fun if only the library actually paid a good amount. I'd rather work for myself and then go visit the library <laughs> so that I can be financially independent because it is a public servant type job. It's government it's government work, so chances are it probably doesn't pay great. But anyway, we're not here to talk about any of that. Don't you love live streaming? You gotta love live streaming. That's, oh, this is my right. <laughs> you have not, Chloe. <laughs> Hi, Michael. I'm so excited to go to the post office tomorrow. Okay, this book, this is what we're here to talk about, mindset. So what is a growth mindset? What is the opposite of a growth mindset? It's a fixed mindset. So there's fixed mindset and growth mindset. <laughs> and the, the general gist of what these two things are, a fixed mindset is when you're, you have a focus more on like natural ability, natural talent, and you believe that things are fixed. They're concrete, they're not very changeable. Your level of intelligence, your athletic ability, 
your public speaking skills, what your social skills, you know, whatever it is for you, your weight, something where you feel like I cannot change this, this cannot be changed, this is just how I am, this is how I've always been, this is how I always will be. Or you could have a fixed mindset about other people. That's just how they are. They will never change. They will always be that way. Of course, we can't change other people, but our mindset is either one of fixed or growth in different categories. So no one in the world has a completely flawless growth mindset or a completely closed-minded fixed mindset. Chip, thank you for all those super hearts. Thank you, thank, thank you. Can I make it like... So it's like my kisses are making those hearts. Um, hey, sugar, sugar, sugar. How are you, Linda? Good to see you. Hey, David. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for popping in to the, to the room, to the stream. Love you guys so much. Always feel supported when, with your presence and hope that you feel supported by uh, what I talk about and, and anything I can do for you. You just let me know. Hey, Johnny. Wow, I feel like I haven't seen you in a bit. How are you? How are you doing? I like your guitar. No, I'm not your girlfriend. Oh, you're saying Chloe is your girlfriend. That's that's a good choice. I love Chloe very much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so a growth mindset is the opposite of that. You believe that anything can be changed given the right amount of effort. So your intellect can change, your level of intelligence, your social skills, your, the, your physical appearance, whether it's your weight or your acne or whatever it may be. All of these things can be changed is a growth mindset. And like I said, no one has an absolute extreme one way or the other. We all have little bits of these mindsets, most likely, in, every, in different areas. So we might say, oh, I can change and I can develop and I can grow. But, you know, this one person who hurt me in my life, they will never change. I've never seen them change. They'll never change. They'll always be the way they are. Um, I can think of an example of someone that I know who's a very growth mindset oriented person, but there's one person in their life that they are convinced will never change. They always know exactly what's going to happen. It's just, you know, completely hopeless to even try to help that person or to try to open them up to new ideas and new strategies, which to me is a fun challenge because I'm like, ooh, like if, if I can change, we, if we can change that, then we can soften that area and become fully growth minded about everyone in our life. Also, um, I'm, I'm not fully growth mindset either. Like I've never learned how to ride a bike. I always say I never really cared to know how to ride a bike. I don't need to know how to ride a bike. But really, in, in a lot of ways, I'm embarrassed by it. I'm 29 years old. I don't know how to ride a bike. I don't want people to see me trying to learn how to do something because what, what do we look like when we're trying to learn something new? We were really bad at it. <laughs> it's probably an embarrassing level of bad. <laughs> it doesn't have to be embarrassing. It can be something to be proud of, that you're out of your comfort zone, that you're trying something new, that you're you know, allowing your, this, this type of growth. But for me, I've definitely struggled with that, where I feel like I have to prove myself. I only like to do things that, are, that I'm good at. I like to do things that are easy for me, that are kind of in my natural skill set, my strengths. I don't really like to focus on my weaknesses very often. And I've learned that from other, you know, I've, I read a lot of books and there's a lot of different strategies in life. But looking at our mindset and why and the true reasons why we, we are the way that we are, a lot of this, this book really taught me a lot about myself and I think we all stand to learn a lot from this concept of a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. Um, thank you, Dutchie. Have a good one. Cynicism towards others is unhealthy. I agree with that, um, inspired to live. But I think we all have it, at least with someone, right? We kind of like someone will say, and we roll our eyes, oh, here we go again. Here's that pattern this person has. We just kind of expect the same thing to just keep happening, especially if we've seen that happen with them a lot. And we may not be wrong that this pattern may continue on for a while, but if we believe that they can't change, then we, we're closing our own minds. We're putting limits. Even if we're putting limits on someone else in our mind, we are, we're putting a, a concept of a fixed mindset, a little seed that something in the world is fixed. There's something unchangeable in the world. And that kind of limits our creativity in a lot of ways and our relationships because people can sense when you don't have faith in them, when you're not, you don't really believe in their ability to change or that they're going to do the things they say they're going to do. You know, you, when you're kind of pessimistic and almost apathetic, it doesn't endear you to people. It doesn't feel good to your spouse or your children or your friends when you're that way towards them. And they can tell, even if you don't put it in your words, 
your mindset really shines through in your behaviors, your body language, all that. <laughs> Sorry about that, David. I thought you were talking about me at first. You don't know how to ride a bike? I know. There we go. You learned something new about me. Today I learned what a lemming looked like, and I talked about it a lot in my private Periscope broadcast right before this. <laughs> and I made Chloe go look it up, and then she taught me about Norwegian lemmings, and it was very random. Um, hi, Busy. How you doing? How are you, Joseph? All right, so let me, let me put it in concrete words straight out of the book from you, and you can, I mean for you, and you can tell me if you want, or you can think to yourself or talk up this over with your spouse or your friend or your kids, what kind of mindset you think you have in these different areas. So this is about intelligence, okay? So here's one, right, yeah, about proving ourselves, right? And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, inspired to live, do you have your name on here? Just inspired to live, okay, so maybe I'll just call you inspired. <laughs> That's a beautiful name, I love that. I feel inspired just saying your name, <laughs> okay. First, first thought, right? See if this is a thought that you believe in or you, or you don't. So, so if I said this to you, agree or disagree, all right? You can type it in the chat if you feel like engaging. Your intelligence is something very basic about you that you can't change very much. I was teaching her about sheeple too, Beeve. Sheeple and lemmings, yeah, it's a whole, it's a whole concept. Your intelligence is something very basic about you that you can't change very much. Inspired disagrees, as I would have expected. I see some typing, so I'm just trying to give this another minute. Ooh. <laughs> okay, that's not what I thought you were going to type. So... For me, I, it's so easy to say, oh, I have a growth mindset. I totally, you know, and, and give lip service to it. But if I really think about it, I definitely think of myself as someone who's smart, right? I have a natural ability towards intelligence. I didn't work that hard at becoming as intelligent as I am now. I've worked harder over the last 10 years, but prior to that, I was still a straight A student. I didn't really have to study. I have a strong memory. I don't know if that's really necessarily associated with intelligence in the true sense, but in our school systems, memorization is a big way that they teach us. They just, you know, repetition, repetition, repetition until you have it memorized. And then they kind of judge you on that, how well you can memorize something with a closed book test. Even though the real world's not like that. There's no closed book tests in the real life. Or, I mean, in the real world, like you can Google things. You can ask your supervisor or ask your mentors or your parents or consult some books. You know, it's, it's usually not like that in the real world, but for some reason that's how our school system is kind of run. And because I have a strong memory and I can kind of memorize these things that I hear and read, it was easy for me to do well on tests. I didn't really like doing homework. I wasn't a hard worker in school, but I was rewarded with good grades and being viewed as a bright, intelligent, smart student. And I internalized that. People said, wow, you're really smart. You have so much potential. I remember trying to drop my physics class in senior year in high school and having to go all the way to having a meeting with my mom, the principal, the superintendent, the physics teacher. I mean, this whole thing. My mom had to like take off a little time from work to come into my school and meet with everybody to force them to allow me to drop the class because it wasn't a requirement from the state. I, I should have been allowed to drop the class, but my principal was not allowing me to do so because she said, you're just, you have so much potential and I wish you would just just apply it. Now, I agree and I disagree with this. Yes, I have, we all have potential to get better at things if we apply ourselves. However, if we're not interested in something, if we're not passionate about something, I don't believe that we just should work really hard and apply ourselves fully to anything that comes across our path. Because, you know, I could be the best burger flipper, best drive through best McDonald's manager you've ever seen. Uh, but it, does that really serve me and my goals? Am I passionate about that? Absolutely not. So just because I could be good at something, to me doesn't mean that I should work hard at becoming good at those things. Um, so it's kind of like a double-edged sword in terms of actually pursuing the things you're passionate about and the things that you love. But if you apply yourself and, and put hard work into that, 
it's really going to show. So now I'm a college student at 29 years old. I just started pursuing my associate's degree in July of this past year. I'll have my associate's degree in a couple weeks, which is less than it's 10 months for a two year degree because I really applied myself. I loaded up on classes, I paid out of pocket and I work hard on my assignments. You know, I go above and beyond my child psychology teacher said, listen, you're a perfectionist. And I just want to remind you it's okay to breathe. <laughs> It's like, okay, but that because she can see like I'm, I care a lot and I'm working really hard at it. It's not like it was in elementary school and it's not like people just said that I was smart or gifted or talented or had potential. You know, it really wasn't ta taught to me that the effort put in is the important part, not just your natural ability. So in some ways I do have this deep-seated fixed mindset about this because of my experience growing up that other kids had to work harder at it than I did so I must be smarter than them and that's totally wrong and I know that now but that is there is probably some seed in there because what happens in our childhood is it gets buried into our brains pretty deep deep into that psyche of you know there's the kids that need special classes and special help and tutoring and stay after and, and really work really hard and study for hours and there's kids who don't really need to do that and those kids must be smarter but that's not the case and there's a, a concept of multiple intelligences so there's like creative intelligence which was not at all cherished in my school except maybe in art class there's um like uh, physical i forget it's called like kinesthetic intelligence you know you're you're basically like your athletic abilities your your ability to coordinate your body and muscles there's math and science intelligence um, reading intelligence reading comprehension there's other types of intelligences that aren't coming to me right now. I think music is one. So there's different types of intelligences, and I really like that concept because just you know, just because someone's better at math than you are doesn't necessarily mean they're smarter than you are or will be any more successful in the real world than you are. You might even make more money than someone else who is good at math in school. You know, being good at math doesn't mean you're going to be good at managing a, a business or you know managing your money or, or anything like that just because it's related to money. Okay. Chloe says she disagrees as well. King, I'm good. How are you? Dr. Axler, we are talking about growth mindsets as discovered by Carol Dweck. Carol Baskin. Damn that Carol Baskin. She did it. Her husband, she whacked him. I don't know the words. Um, hi, Sean. Can't say it. Can't tell me. It didn't happen. Um, Stuart, hi, how have you been? How have you been? How have you been? How have you been? I haven't seen you in a bit. It's good to see you. Good to see you. I'm repeating myself. Stuart, 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 what are you doing to me? You're making me repeat myself. Okay, that was just one sentence. Okay, I'm gonna, that's just me trying to be honest and say that you can still find little glimmers of fixed mindsets sometimes. And I'm not trying to blame other people for giving that to me, but you know, I chose to internalize it and chose to listen which is on me. There's always a yet in advancement that people don't consider. <laughs> Fed him to tigers, they snack in. I love you too, Stuart. Thank you for the hibiscus flower. That's actually my favorite flower, that emoji you put there. All right, second. So agree or disagree. You can learn new things, but you can't really change how intelligent you are. Yeah, Kim, I bet you're going to be painting all week long, probably. It's a good workout, though, too. And it's going to make you feel so good when you have it all done, even before you have it done, even just the process of seeing that change, you know, that splash of new color on your walls. That's awesome. Agree or disagree? You can learn new things, but you can't really change how intelligent you are. Chloe said agree. And I think that's kind of where I would fall prior to reading this book is that I would have been like, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can you can learn new things, but your IQ, right, your ability to process information is going to stay roughly the same. 
Uh, Stuart said you can't fix stupid. See, this is, again, these are our, our hints, at least little hints of fixed mindsets that we have where we don't believe that people can actually change. Now, whether or not they will change or whether or not we will change is irrelevant just the belief, right? It's a mindset, it's a framework within all our other thoughts operate within. So do we believe that anyone is capable of changing or do we feel like there are limits? And those limits are a fixed mindset, right? You can always learn more and grow. Right, so do you believe that you could actually increase your IQ? That's kind of the, the challenge there, right? Your actual intelligence quotient. Um, and this mindset would say that, yeah, because you can really change anything if you practice enough. Like basically an IQ test has certain categories of questions on it. If you practice IQ tests and IQ tests and IQ tests and IQ tests and IQ tests, you could improve your score on an IQ test and raise your IQ. Even if, you know what I mean? Even if you're not necessarily like any smarter than you were, I mean, you're, you're better at those things. So you can Im improve and increase and change pretty much anywhere. A2727, hello. Busy, yeah, crazy, right? Hey, Shara, hey, Sup. Hi, 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 my Fitbit friends. Emotional intelligence EQ affects IQ. In what way? What do you mean? I read a book, I'm trying to remember the name of it now, about EQ. The name of it's escaping me right now, but I did do a review on it and I still have it back there on my bookshelf because I want to read it again because that's an area that I struggle with. Hi. All right, number three. No matter how much intelligence you have, you can always change it quite a bit. Agree or disagree? No matter how much intelligence you have, you can always change it quite a bit. You're probably getting the, the theme here, right? So that's a growth mindset question. Right. And even as we talk about this, you may be changing that cha being or a little bit more open. Like, yeah, you know what? You're right. No matter where you're at now, you can get better. For me, it's not just riding a bike, also bowling. I'm really, really not great at bowling. I could get better with practice, kind of like everything. And then number four, you can always substantially change how intelligent you are. Always. Right. No matter what age. Self-focused emotional awareness experiences can help IQ. How? You're, I, think, I think what I understood is that you said that already, but I'm asking how, like how so? In what ways does, does the EQ affect the IQ? Like is there like some study about this or something? Okay, so we know that that would be a growth mindset too. And that can be, it's a, it's a reach, right? We can always substantially improve our intelligence that's like a, that can be a, a big glass of water to chug down, you know? Good job, Kim. Excellent. Okay. Your answer is grounding. I guess I don't understand. I'm sorry. I'm trying. You can always know more. Your brain is never full. Yeah, and what you choose to focus on that's the direction you'll move in. Those are the things you'll get better at, and that's what you, that's where you'll grow. So if you do a lot of arm exercises, your arms will grow. If you do a lot of leg exercises, your legs will grow. If you do a lot of brain exercises, your brain will grow. And now it won't physically grow within your skull, but your neural pathways will become stronger, quicker, more efficient, um, and your your basically your neurological activity will show in an actual scan. It will actually be different and increased, which is crazy and awesome. All right, so not about, not just about abilities, right? So we talked about intelligence, but also about personal qualities too, like personality. So see, do you agree or disagree with this? You're a certain kind of person and there's not much that can be done to really change that. You're a certain kind of person and there's not much that can be done to really change that. Agree or disagree? Hey Cliff, how's it going? How is it going? That was cool, that house that you streamed, Cliff. Dis, disagree, disagree. Okay, lots of growth mindset going on in here. And for those of you that are sitting there going, yeah, I agree with that, but I don't really wanna say, cause I know that's kinda like the wrong thing. 
it's actually more correct to be honest and to have better self-awareness. So like this guy's talking about having emotional awareness. So emotional awareness, not only with other people, but with yourself. How are you feeling and what are your thoughts really? What do you truly believe? What do your behaviors and your words actually say about your thoughts and your mindset rather than just what's the correct answer? You know, I know Taylor and Carol Dweck here in this book, they want me to say growth mindset. So I'm gonna, um, yeah, I disagree with the, it's obviously a fixed mindset statement and I disagree with it. But really try to really, really look deep within and say, is there anywhere where I think, well, that person will never change, right? Maybe you're going through a relationship breakup and you've basically accepted that that person's never gonna change and maybe that they can't change. Uh, they're a certain kind of person and there's not much that can be done to really change that. And now again, you can't change other people, but to believe that there's nothing that could be done to change for that person to change themselves would be a fixed mindset, you know? Mindfulness and sense of self shows you aren't your identity or persona. You are not your emotions. Absolutely, absolutely. Emotions are so fleeting and so, so temporary. What, Gio? What does? Okay, the next one is, no matter what kind of person you are, you can always change substantially. No matter what kind of person you are, you can always change substantially. 2004820, hello, how are you? Agree or disagree? And I'm not even gonna wait for all the answers to come in anymore because I really feel like we're on to what this book is about now. So this is a growth mindset statement to believe that you can always change substantially. This is something I struggle with because there's things that I have been working on for years and it just sometimes feels like progress is so slow and, and I, I take 10 steps back and one step forward and it's like, oh, you know, sometimes it really does feel that way. But to remember and to remind myself and to have that mindset that I can always change substantially no matter what, no matter who I am today, I can be a different person five minutes from now and tomorrow and five years from now and 50 years from now, I'll be a completely different person. It's just staying committed and practicing and going. And every time I, I falter, which will happen, I'm going to get right back on the horse or the bike and I'm going to keep on going, keep on pedaling. Three, you can do things differently, but the important parts of who you are can't really be changed. You can do things differently, but the important parts of who you are can't really be changed. Another fixed mindset concept, right? That, that some, there's some fundamental part of our personality or something that defines us that cannot be changed, right? This isn't really talking about like your soul, like who we are, like um, that, like that centered, the observer, the witness, you know, the soul that kind of connects everyone with everyone. Not necessarily that, that relatively unchanging part of ourselves. We become more aware of that part of ourselves, I think, but this is more like just saying that there's thing we can do things differently, but, but fundamentally we're still the same person, you know? We're still the same way. Is this an MLM? No, 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 metal, definitely not. You can change, anyone can change. Absolutely, I agree with that, yeah. More so after reading this. <laughs> And then four, you can always change basic things about the kind of person you are. You can become more loving. You can become a better listener. You can become more kind and compassionate, more generous, more sensitive, more emotional, you know, more emotionally intelligent, maybe is a, is a word. Um, ha you can have better emotional control if you're on the other side of the spectrum and you're, you feel maybe very sensitive and, and hypersensitive. You know, you can stop blaming other people for your problems. You can, you can change how often you judge and criticize others. You can choose to bite your tongue. You can improve your self-control. You can improve your willpower. You're not, you're not born with a fixed amount of willpower that you'll never be able to increase or change. So really, really, really good stuff. Okay, so that's the only part directly from the book that I'm going to share. Let me show the book again. So if anyone's wondering what the heck's going on, this is Mindset, The New Psychology of Success by Carol Dweck. This is the review and summary that we're talking about here. I don't sell apples. Well, I do sometimes on Animal Crossing. I'm going back to school for physical therapy assistance. Nice, PTA. You're not pigeonholed in my self story identity. Right, yes, you are not your parents. That's, that's a big one, yeah. You are not your friends. You know, you are, you can be anything and anyone in any way that you want to be. Take the cork off the fork. What does that mean, Stuart? 
Um, no. Are you bored? All right. So here's a question. Is success about learning, growing, not giving up? Success, right? Is success about learning? Is success about growing? Is success about not giving up? Or is success about proving yourself? Is success about accomplishing something? And that's a tough one, right? So I, again, you can kind of tell probably what the correct answer is here or what she would say is the more beneficial way to view these things. But I would, I would venture to guess that most of us, especially if you live in America or even any kind of like Western society, that success is based on accomplishments, right? So success is like, like if you ask someone on the street, what is success? How do you define success? You know, when will you know that you're successful? How many people are gonna say, success is never giving up? You know, most people are gonna say like, success is earning a profit on my business, or success is having a happy relationship, or success is losing weight. You know, there's like, we have goals. So success, you could even sum that up into like, success is achieving goals, reaching goals. Success is, um, you know, proving to your parents or to your ex or to your teachers, you know, these people that never believed in you or beat you down, that you are worthy and you are important and special and your ideas are valuable, you know, proving yourself. Is success about proving yourself? How do you define success? And how do you want to define success? Change your perspective on failure. So they say the, the path to success is paved with failures, right? So you hear that a lot. If you fail, just try, try again. And now she does talk about something I think is important in this book, which is that this isn't about just keep doing the same thing over and over again, like, like um, down to the nitty gritty. So if you're trying something and it's not working, you can try something else to get to that same goal, right? So like a teacher's job is not to get you to memorize all the information. A teacher's job is to help you to learn the information and we all learn differently. So it's, it's I actually, what did I, oh, I just got to use this the other day with one of my kids, something like uh, they said, I forget something about school or something, a class, a test, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I asked them how did it go? And they were like, good, I think they said it was kind of boring or something, thank you Shara for the super hearts. And I said, well, did you learn anything? And he thought about it for a minute and he goes, no. And I go, well, it sounds like, he had said something like where he did bad or he failed. It was some, I, I wish that I remembered the words now. It was like, he was like, I failed this thing or something. And I was like, well, did you learn anything? And he was like, no. And I was like, well, it sounds like it failed you right? Because it, it failed to teach you anything. So if you didn't like get a good grade on a test and you didn't learn anything, then this, the system has failed in some way because you didn't, you came home not learning anything, right? This isn't coming home, right? We're in stay at home orders and it wasn't a test. Like he's young. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something where he felt like he didn't do good on it. And then he also didn't learn anything from maybe mistakes or whatever that may have happened. And so it's like, obviously that's on the parents part. We can teach him how to look at what ones he got wrong and learn more. But also it's like the teachers sometimes need to make sure that they're catering to the different learning styles of different kids. And that's not easy. It's not easy to figure out how to get all the different kids to learn in one classroom, you know, in a short few months of the year and then on to next, the next teacher they go. And it's not easy for parents to figure if you have multiple children, the best way to get them to learn. Shara just, who just sent super hearts, she is a, a mom of four kids and a homeschool teacher. And I bet she comes into this too. It's like, how can I get my kids to understand this information? Because as adults, we take it for granted, right? We know how to read, you know, we, we, we have these things, like we've kind of learned, we figured out a way to learn these things. And now to try to teach it to somebody who might learn differently than us is like, okay, we got to learn different strategies. Both need to teach to receive information correctly. Failure is a learning experience, yeah. The be versus the do, exactly, yes. One, but people would say two, all of the above. Yeah, yeah. So what if you thought not only that failure is the path to success, but that the failure is the success? So stay with me here, because that sounds 
kind of maybe like new agey. But the concept of you failed, which means that's a good thing because here is an opportunity to learn, like what Sep just said. I failed. You know, something didn't, something went wrong here. And you can take it personally and say, oh, I'm, I made a bad choice. Whatever, you know, we're humans. You're going to have feelings. Feel the feelings. Let them go. They're just feelings, okay? They're not, they don't identify or, or sorry, they don't define you or your identity in any way. But what can you learn? Why didn't it work? What went wrong? What would have made it better? How, is there a way to make it better? Is it the right path to the goal? Is there a different way? Is there a, if, the, if you can't get in the front door, try the side window, try the back door, slide down the chimney if you have to, take a sledgehammer to the wall, get in there <laughs> somehow. If you really care about what's inside there, figure out a way to get in there, be creative. Don't be like, oh, the front door is locked and then just give up on your dream. You know what I mean? Like just be persistent. Uh, and, and remember that you, every time you fail, you've succeeded. So this, we, we talk about this in meditation a lot. Every time you notice that your mind has wandered from whatever you're thinking about in your meditation, so say you have a mantra, okay? Your mantra is peace and love. Inhaling peace, exhaling love, inhaling peace, exhaling love, and this is what you're supposed to be thinking mentally the whole time you're meditating. Peace, love. Peace, love. And then, you know, five minutes into the meditation, you're thinking about what you're gonna make for dinner tonight. <laughs> Chloe, thank you for the super arts. Thank you so much. And you you realize that, you know, maybe two minutes later, you go, oh, I'm thinking about chicken parm. That's my bad. <laughs> that is the success. That is like the key of meditation where you noticed. You noticed. That's the whole point of meditation is noticing, observing. Sorry, I'm getting really excited about this. But it's true. It's like you noticed that your mind wandered and you went, whoop, and you came back. You said, peace love hopefully you didn't say oh i suck at this i'm so bad at this i'm gonna give up now because that is a true failure right the true failure is in giving up too soon it's okay to change your goals and say like you know after a while you might be like i don't even really care about this like i'm not really even that into this thing i was going after this goal because my parents told me it was important or the world told me it was important or my my spouse told me this was important so i was pursuing it for the wrong reasons and therefore it's not really in my value set and i don't really want to do it that's not really giving up right that's becoming more self-aware and changing you know, changing your goals and your trajectory. That's okay to do. You don't have to pursue relentlessly some goal that's not that important to you because it's gonna be basically impossible to find that energy to, to keep going and keep going. But if you really wanna, if you really wanna write a book or you really wanna start your own business or you really wanna find love and, you know, intimate romantic love, it, then don't give up on that. Don't give up at the first sign of rejection. Don't give up at the first sign of failure because that is the success. So this girl said, no, she doesn't want to go on a date with you. Maybe you could ask her why, you know, buck up a little bit. Be like, all right, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go for this. She might say some stuff I don't want to hear. Chances are people usually won't tell us things they don't think that they want us to, that we want to hear. So they might not even tell you the truth of why they're saying no. But hopefully we can learn a little something from it. If they don't tell you, you can still look and go, go through your chat history and say, okay, how was I coming across? What kind of energy was I presenting here? How, how often was I texting and calling compared to this person? You know, look at it and say, okay, well that didn't work. Texting them five times an hour, every hour for 12 hours a day, and they would respond once every six hours was not effective. Maybe I could try something different. Maybe I could chill out a little bit. Maybe I can reach out to this person, this next person a little bit less. You know, maybe I can try a different strategy. I don't care, try a new cologne, try a different haircut. There's so many things you can try. Just don't be like, you just don't think that it's, okay, this one person rejected me. So all of humanity has rejected me. But also you don't have to be so attached to just one strategy like, well, their loss, they can't appreciate a good thing when they see it. I'm not changing anything about myself. I don't need to change because I'm amazing. And you know what I mean? It's like, we can all get better. So don't ever feel like you're there, right? You're enlightened. You're at the maximum level. You cannot get any better. You cannot like be a more attractive mate. You are God incarnate. You know, that's a little bit narcissistic, right? So it's a balance here. It's good to be confident but it's another thing to be unreasonable, right? If, if you've been dating now, if you're in your late 30s, you've been single this entire time, but actively trying to date people, like 
take a look at yourself and say, okay, what can I try differently? What can I change? You know, what, what might be going on here? And hopefully you can get some honest feedback from people in your life who will tell you, I think it might be this, or it might be this, or it might be that, you know, maybe try this. Um, and, and hopefully you can take that constructively and not like, oh, this is such an insult, I'm going to take it so personally, because hopefully these people, whether it's your parents or your friends or whatever, are trying to help you, right? They genuinely have your best interest in mind. They say, I know that you really want to find love and you're having a hard time finding it, you know, it seems to me like maybe you're coming across a bit desperate and try not to take it personally. It's going to hurt, right? It's going to anytime. So, okay. I'm going to give one example and then I'm going to catch up on the comments because I know I missed a few product. I see you. Hi guys. Hi. Um, give me just one second to share this quick story from last night. Some of you may have already seen it. If you've supported me on GoFundMe or if you follow my GoFundMe or if you uh, check out my Twitter page, I, I posted it last night. I had an assignment for my social psychology class last night. I had to watch a two and a half minute video, two and a half minutes long, a YouTube video, and then write a 700 minimum word essay paper about this two and a half minute long video. And my first reaction is, are you freaking kidding me? So I watched the video first. That wasn't my first thought. My first thought was, I didn't know the video was two and a half minutes long. I watch it and I'm like, this video better be like deeply profound and, and thought provoking. And it kind of wasn't, right? It was very basic and I'm like, it was a very simple concept. I could explain what happened in that video in 30 seconds. How in the world does this professor expect me to write 700 words about a two and a half minute long video? This is ridiculous. So I proceeded to express that feeling to my boyfriend. My boyfriend said, I told him what the video was about. And he said, oh, well, you know, it, it could be like this. You could write about this. He's like, I feel like I could write about so many different things about that. That, was, that would actually be easy to just kind of write about anything. You know, it's almost like it's such a small little thing. You could take it any direction that you want. And I was kind of cranky about it, right? So I'm kind of PMSing and I don't love writing long papers. So I was kind of like, mm. but I said, okay, thank you. Very unauthentically but I've been reading a lot about this kind of stuff it's like okay you know this is good advice it was nice he didn't do anything mean he didn't insult me or anything it wasn't what I wanted him I wanted him to say oh that's ridiculous that professor is crazy that sucks good luck I don't know how you're gonna do that and validate my fixed mindset kind of grumpy cranky complaining criticizing energy but instead he came at me with quite the growth mindset oh there's so many opportunities there's so much there that you could write about and I was like mm, thanks uh. but then I, I ended up writing over a thousand words pretty easily it was like an hour hour and a half it took me to write a thousand words about how to not judge a book by its cover withhold judgment you know look deeper within all these things that he gave me these ideas and then I'm like so I, I was felt really a lot of love for him and I wrote a post about it on my GoFundMe about how it reminded me why I love this man so much and why I both of us made pretty hard choices to be in this relationship that we're in together now because of how, from my perspective, he makes me better. He makes me this person I want to be. He gives me this perspective and this mindset to get out of my cranky little rah and be like open and oh, there's so much potential here. There's so much we can do and have this positive kind of reaction. I was like, yes, at once I got over my myself, right? Once I got over myself, I was able to say, yeah, this is making me a better person. I love this man so much. I appreciate him so much. And he saw it and he was like, hey, just like, if you ever want me to just, you know, be a sounding board and just say, you know, to validate you and just, just tell me, just let me know. I don't want to annoy you. I don't want to be like, you know, always trying to fix things and you're just trying to vent. And I was like, no, 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 that is not what I want. In the moment, it feels like that's what I want. But I said to him, the words I said was, but I want to be pushed into a growth mindset, kicking and screaming because that is hard. You know, I'm kind of skipping ahead to like the end of the book, but she talks about like, it's hard. You're not going to just learn about growth mindset. And all of a sudden your life is everything is growth mindset. You think, oh, there's so much potential and opportunity for change and effort in everything in the world. No, 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 no. It's, it's hard. It is something that we have ingrained habits into our mental patterns and into our lives. And they've, they've come to us from external sources like teachers and parents and exes and everything and, and friends and, and bosses and whoever else. And it's hard to undo these things, right? Um, but I, I did a meditation not too long ago that was called something like um, 
peace does not come from doing. Peace comes from the undoing. So in a lot of ways, we have to undo a lot of that and it's painful and it's a process and it takes time and patience and practice, but you can get there if you just stick with it. And self-awareness helps a lot. So definitely encourage you to meditate to, to kind of help with changing mindsets. Okay, so I'm gonna read the comments real quick because I missed a few. It depends on if you've gone through that self-awakening through the failure. Yeah, so if every time you failed, you gave up, you don't necessarily, you haven't necessarily experienced that yet. I was like that as a kid. I would be really naturally good at mu music, like piano and, and violin and clarinet and whatever else. And then however many months into, you know, the lessons, they would really start challenging me, right? Because your teacher, hopefully good teachers, will keep pushing you and pushing you and pushing you to grow and grow and grow and, and, and do more and achieve your full potential, which is what they should do. But to me, it was like, Oh, I liked being good at it. I liked playing those really simple things and being really good at it. And when it became hard and challenging, I didn't want to do it anymore because I didn't want to mess up. I didn't want to be bad at anything. I wanted to be good. I wanted to be a natural talent because a lot of a lot of the world and our American society values that. Oh, they're like a natural, just they've been playing since they were a baby, you know, child prodigy. And when you're not that and you have to work hard, there's this concept, the fixed mindset tells you that in, in society with many fixed mindset ideals, tells you that if you have to work hard at it, you're not very good at it. And that's BS because through working hard at something is how you become good at it. And all those child prodigies probably played a lot and practiced a lot, a lot more than the other children, which is why they seemed like prodigies, but really they just had a lot more practice. They put a lot more work in. Um, and child prodigies actually oftentimes right around like adolescence, all their peers start to catch up to them and even surpass them because they have sometimes established bad habits. Like maybe they hold their violin the wrong way and they don't want to change it because they've always been good at it. They don't want to be something. They don't want to be bad at something. They don't want to have to work hard at something because then they feel like, oh, maybe I'm not as good at this as I thought, you know? But some of the most successful people in the world, like Michael Jordan is a very common example that gets used. He worked really hard. He was there practicing in the morning. He was practicing late at night and he listened to his coaches. He took criticism and feedback and he changed. And he would, you know, for a while he would struggle. Like he, I think he stopped playing for a while and then he came back and he wasn't very good in the beginning. So he started figuring out what was he not good at and he practiced that. He practiced the things he wasn't good at. So he was continuing to not be good at it, not be good at it. Then he got a little better, a little better, a little better. And then he's, you know, freaking Michael Jordan. So we all know about that. You're the dream, Stephen. This is not written in the Bible. This is a book called Mindset by Carol Dweck. Mantra similarly helps us to focus or create. Yes. So I can change. I can change. I can change. Like I got this, you know, confidence boosters, like just helping you to not give up because I feel like that really is the true failure is when you give up for the wrong reasons. You give up because it's hard or you choose the easier path. We try to teach this to our kids. So like uh, the other day we had this math challenge and it was like you know subtraction is a little bit more difficult than addition probably for all of us and I you know they were I was like which one do you want to do addition or subtraction and of course they're both like addition because it's easier right we want to go down that easy path and I said okay well if you're better and one of them says addition because I'm better at that and I said okay well if you're better at that one then which one do you think you should practice which one do you think you need to get better at and then he was like subtraction. He picked it a little begrudgingly. I kind of led him that way, right? But then he was so proud after because he got this result on it and his brother got a similar result with the addition. And he's like, and I was doing subtraction. Like he's like, yeah, I was doing the harder thing. And he was so proud of that harder thing. Plus it's going to make him better at it. So, uh, you know, we all, it's like even when they play their Fortnite game, they're like, oh, like sometimes I want to play this certain level because it's easier. You know, they're like, oh, the people in this battle, whatever challenge are so much harder. They're so much better players. And I'm like, yeah, that's good. Go in there because it's going to make you way better, way faster. And it's harder to do that because we want to be good at it. Like Mario Kart, they usually don't want to play online because the people on Mario Kart online are way harder than the computers you play not online, you know, so little examples that a lot of us can probably relate to. How'd you miss that, Steven? Wait, miss, miss what? Beautifully worded. Oh, thank you. Oh, my yoga video? I don't know. I mean, it's on my YouTube channel, I believe, and you can scroll through my replays here on Periscope, too. Hey, UV. Thank you. Thank you. 
Incompatibility can attract, but it only takes you so far. Incompatibility can attract? What do you mean by that? 30s, I wish. True. Okay, good night, Chloe. I love you. Miles, hi. Gotta have a good circle. That helps. That definitely helps if you have a bunch of people around you that help to lift you up and, and make you better, you know? Definitely helpful, but not everybody can start there, right? You have to kind of like build that circle. You have to kind of start like weeding your garden and like kind of like removing the things that don't serve you or the people that don't serve you and trying to bring in people that you want to learn and grow from. Imagination, you almost stabbed him. Who did I almost stab? That depends on if both is so... Oh, <laughs> Ed last night? I did not almost stab him. <laughs> That depends on if both is self-activated, if they can see those self-triggering signs. That's huge. Actually, I read that in some other book. I don't even know what book it was. I think it was actually one of my classes, one of my psychology classes. If you can verbalize the way that you're feeling, you actually bounce back from negative feelings much faster than people who can't verbalize it. So put it into words. What are you feeling? Because, and you don't have to analyze, you don't have to think why you're feeling this so much. You don't have to like really go into it and, and ruminate over it. But just thinking, oh, I'm feeling kind of like, like I'll say, I feel kind of cranky. I feel kind of irritable. I feel like I'm PMSing. Like, I feel like this is hormonally linked. I'll look at my period tracker app that I have. I was like, yep, eight days away from getting my period. Seems a little early, but last month is the same thing. You know, self-awareness. I'm tracking it. I'm going hormonally, this is normal. It's normal for women right before their period to have these hormonal changes, which cause like even like Ed's eyebrow touched my head earlier and I was like, oh, your eyebrow's so sharp. It's like knives. <laughs> and he's like, what the heck? He's like, oh, my eyebrows are soft. What do you mean? And I'm like, it's just because I have this raised level of, I don't know if it's estrogen or progesterone or whatever at this stage. Um, and it makes my skin extra sensitive. Like normally he can cuddle me with no shirt on, but he, and he has a hairy chest. But when it's this time of the month, it, his hair feels like little needles. And it's not him, it's nothing has changed about his hair, right? I can't be mad at him or blame him. I just have to say like, hey, I'm kind of like PMSing right now. Can you put a shirt on and continue to cuddle me? Because I still want to be cuddled, right? In a very particular way. <laughs> put your hand here, do that. <laughs> because, but he knows too, right? So I'm not blaming him or anything or him being, oh my God, she's, she's such a, a bitch, you know? Instead, it's like, okay, this, this is a cycle. This is like... This is just part of it. And the more aware of it I am, the more we can laugh about it and make jokes. Like, he'll laugh at me. He's like, you're being so crazy right now. I'm like laughing too. Like, I know, but just put your hand right there. Just so, okay, now we can like cuddle properly, you know? And it's just like about awareness. Awareness is huge. I totally agree with you, Inspired. 700 words is only a couple of sides of A4. What's A4? Is that, a, this is a British thing, Seth. Will you teach us? What's next juice? It's a connected group of people who value positivity. Did you guys hear that? I thought I just heard a little like popping. Laptop, are you exploding? Please don't explode. You like challenging questions? Um, uh, I'm, sometimes I'm a little bit skeptical in the internet world that I operate within. That like if someone says that, they're gonna ask me something like very personal or sexual or something. So I like challenging questions, but I have limits and boundaries to what I'm comfortable answering in a public space such as this. Like deleting fake friends from life. Uh, yeah, I mean fake friends, definitely. Yeah, so if somebody's like not who you think they are, right? If they're not, if they're not treating you as well behind your back as they do to your face, definitely. But even just people, think of the people in your life that you go to when you want to complain. I have a couple friends where something will happen and I want to gossip to them. I want to say, oh, this happened. Oh my God, can you believe blah, 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 this is this. Or I'll say, oh, I don't feel like doing anything today. I want to just drink beer and be lazy. I have like these different friends that I want to go to when I have those feelings because they'll validate me and they'll justify it and they'll agree with me and they'll tell me I'm totally right and that person's totally crazy and oh my God, I can't believe they did that. And oh yes, I totally love, I'm just eating like th five pounds of cheese right now. I'm so glad that you're feeling the same way. You know, they like, they reinforce these bad habits and so think about those people in your life because those people can feel good to be around. You know, those people, they make us feel like everything we're doing is great. But really observe that tendency for you to want to go to that person and see if you can maybe put a little distance there. Um, because you want, you might want to say, oh, well, I'm going to influence them in a positive way. But negativity is more powerful than positivity. So until you get um, some distance from that and can build up your your threshold, so to speak, 
only then is it going to be more safe, basically, for you to interact with those people because they can definitely suck you right on down. Thank you, Kim. Thank you for saying that. Thank you. Um, a lot of what I'm saying is is from the book, you know, and that's like everything. Every So much of what I say, I'm not trying to get up here and be a know-it-all. I'm learning and I'm trying to share what I'm learning with you guys, not because I know everything, but because I think, oh, this is so interesting, so fascinating. This brought me a lot of awareness to myself. And, and so I want to share that with you guys if it helps you. If not, that's fine. You can watch other stuff, you know. <laughs> um, MS Forever 313. Hi, who is this on YouTube? Hi, hello. Good to see you. Who is this? I feel like I might know who it is, but I'm, I'm not sure. Is it MS or is it Miss? Miss Forever. Hi. Hello. Um, undoing is a type of doing. Peace is being, not doing or undoing. Well, undoing stress comes through being, right? Comes through meditation, I believe. Um, and even like stretching, even asana, a lot of that is undoing things that we've done to our bodies over time. So I think that undoing, you know, I think peace can come through doing and undoing actually and being we're always being though I, the whole concept of we're human beings not human doings we're always doing something even if we're sitting in meditation just being we're still doing that right there's no way to like not be doing something in my opinion but this is all semantics none of that matters find your peace you know find peace whatever brings you peace um i don't play instruments anymore no I was, see, I will say though, I did work really hard at piano and I got really, really good at piano when I was young, but I didn't care. Like, I just didn't, I didn't want, I didn't want to keep practicing because I didn't see any future of me playing piano. Like, I didn't want to be a concert pianist. I didn't want to compose music. Like, I just never have really been that type of a person. It didn't, invoke a lot of passion it didn't feel amazing to be playing it was cool because in a way I like to impress people with that skill um, I, I took it for granted a little bit but at the same time like I would still like to be able to do that but what it takes to to be able to do that to me it's not worth it I would much rather read books than practice piano you know what I mean and you can't do everything you can't be great at everything you can't do everything so you do have to kind of choose so I I've made my choice to make peace with that but I always know and I always have that there and it's like okay one day maybe I'll noodle around on it the average the common folk meaning us well we're all you know the average is the average so most of us fall into that category thanks products my hair's gotten long I think it's because I straightened it today it looks extra long because there's not really like much waves in it but yeah it has been getting long thanks for noticing Danny Savannah, you may or may not know me. I'm used to seeing you on Periscope sometimes with Isabel. Savannah, what was your username on Periscope? Do you remember? That name sounds familiar. I feel like because of Isabel's scope at the bowling alley, right? Best quote from Bill Gates. Choose a lazy person to do a harder job because they will find the easiest way to do it. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, work smart, not hard, right? But work hard too. Work hard and smart. Have I established that as my trademark phrase yet? Welcome to the internet? I think you have, because you always say that. Being open-minded is good. Knives, though. <laughs> Period app. I learned something new today without <laughs> meaning or wanting to. Yeah, it's called P-Tracker. P-Tracker, and it's for tracking your period. And it's free. I look healthy and happy. Thank you, Stuart. I'm wearing makeup, and I am happy. And also, my eye is still bugging me, but a little bit less. Look, it's all, like, squinched. My eye. I think I, I think I scratched it somehow. Ed is a hairy yeti, a hairy sexy yeti. I come in and you call me a bitch. Wow, I didn't call you a bitch. I said I was a bitch. This is why Taylor isn't a Sonic the Hedgehog fan. I like Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, thank you for inviting your followers, Matt. But wait, why am I not a Sonic the Hedgehog fan? <laughs> oh, because of his spiky needle-like hair. A4 is a size of lined paper. You type papers on... on wait, do you hand write your papers? What? It's happening right now. That would take so long. I use just computer paper. Let me see how many pages it ended up being. It was called Withhold Judgment. Withholding Judgment. I won't count the cover page or the reference page. So it's six pages with those, so it's four. And the last page is only like a paragraph. So it's like, yeah, a little more than three pages. Nothing too crazy. And that was a thousand words. At the bowling alley. Yes, I do remember that. I do. That's my favorite part of relationships, laughing about each other. Yes, laughing is so fun. Internet world. Happy New Year, you too, Danny. 
Girls like to gossip. Guys do too. Some guys. Five pounds of cheese. Suck you right on down. Suck you down. Introduce me to your friends. Don't threaten me with a good time. She is single. She doesn't eat five pounds of cheese. But she is the girl I go to when I want to be. When I don't want to do things that are good and healthy for me. Having assumptions agreed to can also be can also not be helpful as there's no impartial witness listening. Um, yeah, so it sounds like what you're talking about is something similar to The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Highly recommend that book. It's a classic. It's very simple, very basic, very short book, easy to read. And they talk about, you know, removing assumptions. Try not to have any assumptions. Don't assume that you know anything. <laughs> Don't take anything personally. Always speak positively so always be impeccable with your word jerry seinfeld says i try not to say anything i wouldn't want printed on the cover of people magazine <laughs> and always do your best those are the four agreements i don't understand so you sell feet pics yeah that's that's pretty much exactly what's what's happening here <laughs> is she like five hours behind with 30 people are just ignoring our antics she duped us this is a repeat sounds like a bladder application what are you saying it cut in the entire bedroom while listening. It cut in the entire bedroom. Wait, you finished painting the bedroom? Yes! She just reading my first comment 20 minutes ago. Listen, I was ranting and now I'm catching up with comments. This is my style. I talk, 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 talk. Then I read the comments. Then I talk some more. Then I read the comments. Because if I, all I did was read comments, then none of the content would be my own. It would simply just be a conversation. <laughs> Half the content's not even my own. It's inspired by books. I no no there's no such thing as original thought, you know? How do we find that period tracker? I'll conveniently not talk to my girlfriend. I don't think that's gonna help the relationship. I don't think so. What's the first system you own? Sega or Super Nintendo? I think the first system I owned was actually PlayStation. I didn't have my friend had an N64. My grandma had the original Nintendo. And she played Dr. Mario all the time, but I think she had that and I lived with her. So I played that sometimes, but I think the first one I had was actually PlayStation. PlayStation 1. And I used to play Spyro and Spice Girls. And Tekken, Mortal Kombat, I think both of them. And Gran Turismo. Anyway, no one cares about that. Well, okay, someone does. The product cares about that. You use the P tracker, it's very useful. Dub, you're a dude. Thank you for inviting Narita, how are you? Hi! A few more days, it's okay, this is a safe place. Do you know someone named Raina? People come to my scope saying we'd be a good couple a lot. Oh my god, is Raina single? Uh, Raina's cool. She has um, llamas. Or no, she has alpacas. Yeah, she's cool. You follow her? What happened to the Fitbit challenges? I only invite people who are taking less steps than you. <laughs> I'm only inviting people that are taking like four to, to six or seven K steps a day. So as soon as you go over that amount, I stop inviting you. Not just you. There's like a lot of people. I've, I've basically just started inviting like nine people. Because I, I, it's only motivating if I'm actually competing with someone. If people are taking like 30,000 steps a day, like it's not motivating to me, right? It just feels like I'm taking 2,000 steps. Like I'm not, I'm not competing with that person. I'm, I'm at the bottom and I have no chance of m moving my way up here. So I'm trying to compete with people that are around my same level so that it actually motivates me to take another couple hundred or couple thousand steps rather than trying to take like 20,000 more steps in one day, you know? That makes too much sense. You're a doll, you're a doll. My painting arm is dead. <laughs> Oi, uh, bon nuit, bon nuit. Oh no, wait, you're speaking uh, Portuguese. Buon, buon noite, buon noite. I don't know how to speak Portuguese. <laughs> you remember renting PS1 from Blockbuster? Renting it? Okay, I don't remember that. I do remember renting games, but I think Blockbuster, but also Hollywood Video. Those are the classic games. Gran Turismo, I love that game. Okay, some people care. All right, good, because it has nothing to do with the book. No, I don't follow her yet. What, why? Do you know her username? I think it's, I think it's this, hang on. I'm checking. I don't think it's that. I think that's her name. Yeah, I don't, I don't know her username, but. Reyna is married, respect the ring. Products. Who is telling you you'd be a good couple with someone who's married? Don't do that. How are you going to be on Survivor with that attitude? I'm going to plead the fifth on that one. Um, Ann Taylor model. Thank you. I don't know what that means, but I'll, I'll take it. Thanks, Yoko. Just because someone's married doesn't mean that's the one. Wow. 
Wow, very unapologetic of you. I better go. Ciao, Bella. Captivating chat and book. By the way, do you use Instagram for posts and chat? I don't really post on Instagram a lot. I want to post a little bit more. It's not that important to me, to be honest. It's more important for me to go live on Periscope because that's where my largest connections are, like my largest community. Um, so Instagram I haven't posted to in a long time, but I do stories on there, and I respond to all my messages that I get on there. So yeah, follow me on Instagram. Embrace the competition. Always follow those who are ahead of you. I do, don't I? Who am I not following? I follow Reina. I just don't know what her username is. You respect women a lot, just not their husbands. Is that what I'm understanding here? Hi, Mike. Back to the book. Also, change your perspective on effort. Remember that just because you have to work hard at something doesn't mean that you aren't, that you won't be good at it. Just because you're not good at it right now doesn't mean that, you know, we, we have this thing where it's like, if I have to work hard at it, I suck at it. I'm not good at it and I don't want to work hard. Change your perspective on effort. Realize that that is the key to success. And that is success. Working hard and trying hard at something, even if you fail over and over again, that's success. That's building up that willpower. Willpower needs help. You're not born with willpower. You're not born an amazing leader. You're not born a success. Successful people are made. Or ask yourself, is this, are successful people that I know of, were they born that way or were they made that way? Did they make the choices and do the work to make themselves that way? Did mentors and teachers and connections and parents pour into them and help make them into more successful people as opposed to just, they just rolled out of bed and were like, I piss awesomeness now. Take more steps on Fitbit and beat me. Okay. Number one rule, respect Yoshi. I'm stuck in my house in case you don't know what's going on in the world, so I have no treadmill, so my house is not that large, and walking in circles is driving me insane. Should I bang this married chick that has been trying to bang for over a year? I can't make that decision for you. If he's treating the woman to yeah, I don't know what that means. Um, ciao, ciao inspired, just not Ed. People with too many steps. Them too, oh. Oh, if he's treating the woman right, yeah. Okay. Okay. How would you possibly know how someone was treating someone? We're allowed to go out and exercise here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can walk around my neighborhood, which I do sometimes, but, like, it was raining all day today, so it is what it is. It was raining all day today and the day before yesterday. So yesterday I walked around, but still I'm not taking 20,000 steps a day. I never was. I was never competing with you on Fitbit. Do I believe in soulmates? No. Do you? Just like you, Sep, you only participate in the challenges if you think you can actually win, you know? Like when you're like, oh, I'm not going to take a lot of steps, you just don't even participate at all. <laughs> so, okay. Remember when life was normal? No. <laughs> all right, so remember, is success about learning, growing, and not giving up, or is it about proving yourself? Is it about achievements? Now... Here's another great thing from this book. Be careful about how you praise people, especially your children, right? Because our parents have such a huge influence on us. Be careful about the words you praise. It's okay to praise your children, but you can actually harm them and have the, the opposite outcome that you think you're having by praising them. This is like the participation trophy thing, right? So by saying, oh, you're so smart. Wow, you're so good at that. These are very, very dangerous things to say to your children because you usually say that when they do really well at something, right? So they, they have some great sports, sports event or they do some great homework, you know, or, or test or something. Wow, look how good you did at that. They did it really fast. It was like the natural ability. If you praise natural ability that when they come in, then when they come into something hard, they have to work at it, that's going to mean to them that they aren't smart. Or if they mess up, they make a mistake. That means they aren't smart. They aren't so good at that. And that's not going to make them feel good. So instead, saying to them things like, oh, wow, you got such a good grade on that. You must have worked really hard. I see that you didn't give up. I'm so proud of you for not giving up for working really hard, for putting your mind to it, for staying focused. I'm proud of you for um, making those mistakes and then learning from them. You know, that's a good thing. The kids have this app that they use for math and when they get a question wrong, it makes this like 
sound. And when I hear that sound now, after reading this book, I'm going, oh, that's such a good sound because now you can learn something. If you, if it was so easy, and this is for you guys too, right? Not just for kids. And this is anybody praising your employees, praising your spouse, you know, praising your friends, whatever. You can actually hurt them because you, you change their perception of themselves by telling them they're so smart or they're so good at this. They're so talented. You know, instead focus on the hard work that they put into it. Wow, I know you worked really hard to get that promotion or you worked really hard to get that project done. And I really appreciate that. I'm really impressed with your tenacity that you don't give up and you stay committed and you stay determined. You know, those are the things we want to praise people for. Bob, Redondo Beach, thank you for the super hearts. Hi, 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 thank you. I'm going to read your, your comments in a moment. Hey there, Juicy, how you going? When I see Rosanna, I know that it's you in the chat. Um... Oh crap, see I shouldn't have read the comments. Careful how you praise them. Oh yeah, if, if something's really easy. So if something's just so easy and effortless for you, and it's, it's one thing if like you have some things in your life that are like that, of course, right? Not everything needs to be challenging. But if everything in your life feels super easy and effortless and just easy breezy, life is just going swimmingly and I don't even have to put any effort into it, it's just flows naturally okay great but at the same time like are you really growing right now have you pushed yourself out of your comfort zone in any arena at all have you learned anything new have you tried anything new because if a life with no challenge isn't really much of a life at all I mean that's the reality you know like if everything is easy you're probably not trying hard enough. You know, you're probably not trying enough new things. You're probably not exploring enough and experimenting enough. You don't want to be on your deathbed looking back saying, you know, I, I should have really tried some different things. You know, I really took the easy road in life. That's probably not how you want to feel on your deathbed. So push it a little bit so that you can grow. You know, get a bikini wax. <laughs> can't do it I just can't oh, fixed mindset alert raining here too yeah oh and then all the comments disappeared okay so I do have one before the criticism I have one criticism of the book I'm, I guess I'm supposed to bite my tongue on that Con it's constructive though okay so it's 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 to encourage people who are in this boat so it's for a good reason now I'll, I'll get to that in a moment though so we talked about how really challenging it is to change something as fundamental as your mindset because your mindset isn't just your thoughts but your mindset is the frame within which your thoughts operate so it's it's like the structure you know it's your perspective it's changing everything all it's changing the filter through which your thoughts are processed so it's hard it's a process it doesn't happen overnight. It's not easy. Okay, no, nothing worth ch changing like this is gonna be an easy change. It's gonna be gradual. You're gonna have setbacks. And it, that's like with anything. So even outside of the mindset with something that you're trying, like learning how to ride a bike or learning a new language or a new instrument, remember you're gonna be bad at it at first. Practice will make you better. And you're gonna have setbacks. Same thing with dieting. You're gonna have a setback. So what you can do is plan ahead for the setback know that there's going to be maybe you're practicing the instrument every day and then you take a day off and a day off and it, you, and that's going to happen because you haven't really built that habit yet that's okay that happens to everyone everyone no one is perfect we're all works in progress so plan ahead for that plan something some kind of something that you're going to enact when that happens so that you're prepared for it and it doesn't blindside you and make you feel like a failure when when it pops up and when it happens when you get off track with your practice your diet whatever it might be have something where you're like okay I'll reach out to a friend who's my my workout buddy or something or or a music teacher or you'll um you know you have some special incentive so every seven days in a row that you work out or that you you know practice your piano you can do this thing and until you do it you know you can't play animal crossing until you get your piano practice in for the day something like that where you're kind of planning ahead because then when you skip that you also have to skip the fun thing and it can kind of like remind you okay i put this into process i put this plan into action that back then because i knew this was going to happen and it was supposed to help me and motivate me to keep me on track so let's let's get back on track because we're going to fall off track that's just part of it 
Okay. Two more things. One is to name your fixed mindset persona. So I thought about this a little bit because I didn't know what I was going to name mine. And I decided to name mine Sandra <laughs> because I used to work with a woman named Sandra who was very cranky. Just a matter of fact, okay? She was cranky. She was a cranky lady. And she bugged me and seemingly everyone. So when I'm like that, when I'm feeling cranky and hypercritical and like, it's just easy for me to think of that, her being in my head, like, oh, I don't want to be like that, you know? So if you name your persona, it's, it's funny too. Cause you can be like, oh, I'm being Sandra, you know, Sandra's coming up. Oh my God, that was so Sandra of me, you know? And, and in a way I'm kind of like saying her name, which is like, <laughs> you can pick a fake name if you want. You can pick some name, another one. Oh, I used to have, oh, it's even better. I used to have this really, really cranky boss named Doris. Doris might be better. I'm going to write both of those. <laughs> I'll have to see what feels more natural in the moment. If it's Doris or Sandra, <laughs> but they were both older women who were super cranky. And it's like that part that comes out in me sometimes, not because of them at all, but I'm like, I'll be criticized. Like, oh, look at that person's doing this. They, oh, blah, 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 blah. I think I know better than them. I think I know what's going on in their life, which is obviously never the case. And then I can be like, oh, it's Doris. You know, you can even tell your friends and your spouse and your, your, your kids about this person and be like, if I'm being like Doris, just let me know. Just be like, you know, mom, you're being kind of like Doris right now. Like, I don't, I mean, I know, I'm just saying, like, Doris is here now. <laughs> and you're going to be like, what? I'm not Doris. And then you're like, damn, I'm being so Doris right now. Oh, that's crazy. All right, so name your fixed mindset persona. Whenever you're sitting there going, I can't do this. It's too hard. You know, think of, name that person. Make it, and then take that person along with you. Where you go, all right, Doris, we got to get in, we got to get this in shape. I know that you don't think we can do this. I know that you think that, you know, we're failure and, and everything is horrible, but like, we're gonna go for a ride. We're just gonna explore it. You're coming with me. Get in the back seat, get in the passenger seat. Okay, I'm driving, I'm driving this train. You're invited, come along. I know you're just trying to protect me. I know that you're just trying to help me to achieve my goals. You're trying to keep me from getting hurt. You're trying to keep me from embarrassing myself. I get it, I get it, okay? so. Let's just explore it. Let's just try. Let's learn together. You know, so it's like this part of yourself that you're kind of like observing. It's hard because you don't want to, you know, it's hard to, if everything's just part of you. So if you kind of give it a name and then you give it some love and you kind of have a little conversation with it, like, all right, let's do this. Come on, Doris, you got my back? Like you are a ballsy, tough lady. Like I know you're not going to take any crap and you're going to try to keep anything bad from happening, even if it means, you know, calling me every bad name in the book we're gonna get there together we're gonna figure out let's try this other way let's just try it let's just see and let's go from there you know everybody will remember this doris <laughs> okay let me uh let me catch up with comments here and then i'll do my one little my one little thing about the book i loved this book i'll probably give it five stars but i might give it four stars because of this just one little nitpicky kind of thing your son plays the game GTA game day and night, Felipe. Yeah, that's tricky. That's a tricky game because it's pretty negative. Family Feud later? Bro, no. <laughs> the hard stuff makes you better. Exactly. Yes. Only when we're challenged can we grow. If there's nothing challenging, we're not going to grow. We're not going to get any better, right? You tried something new. You're learning how to be a financial advisor. Perfect, Chuckles. I love that. <laughs> so I was talking this over with my financial advisor, Chuckles. People are like, what now? <laughs> Is your financial advisor also a clown? Let's challenge, yeah. Adventures are good. I want to be a high-level assassin. What is happening right now? Someone just gifted you $1,500. They didn't just do that. I don't know when that was. Maybe two weeks ago? These are all over the last 30 days. Yes. Yeah, they, they did it to my GoFundMe. So I'm now less than $4,000 away from paying off my associate's degree on my GoFundMe. So... If you're like, hey, I like talking about psychology. This has been an enjoyable broadcast. I want to help you pay off your degree so you can keep getting more degrees and keep talking about this kind of stuff and keep this channel alive. Even if you just send $5, it helps a lot. The link is in the description, nextjuice.com support, and you'll see the GoFundMe link there that you can click. You play Cajun accordion? Okay, that's awesome. I don't know what that is, but it sounds awesome. I like Cajun things. 
A setup is a setup for a comeback. Yes, plan ahead. Set yourself up for success. Exactly. And be patient with yourself and cut yourself some slack. And remember, you're not going to be perfect. Nobody is perfect. Habits are hard. Old habits are hard to break and new habits are hard to establish. So when you're doing the two at the same time, give yourself some time to get through it. Give yourself some leeway. So fresh, fresh, fresh. Animal Crossing then. Get over it, Doris. Hi, Marsha. Thank you. It's good to see you, Marsha. I missed you. I haven't seen you in a few days. You're not perfect, Matt. I mean, maybe you are. I'm not perfect. That's all I know. <laughs> okay. So the final little teensy bit just from this book, she talks about shyness. And I want to talk about this because I know that this is an online community and there's probably a lot of you guys who are shy in face-to-face -face interactions. Maybe you have social anxiety or generalized anxiety and you have a hard time, you know, being extroverted or really like having good conversations with people that you don't really know, meeting new people and stuff like that. That's okay. Introverts are a very, very important part of the world. Being extroverted is not superior to being introverted. They are both, it's like the yin and yang. That's like saying that being female is superior to being male. No, they're just two different things. So being an introvert and being uh, more, you know, more comfortable with one-on-one -on -one interactions, smaller gatherings, these kinds of things, that's okay. That's fine. That's good. There's a great book called Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking by Susan Cain. If you're an introvert or if you're married to an introvert or if your child is an introvert or your parent or anyone, you're, if you have any introverted employees, anyone in your life is an introvert, which they are, someone is, read this book. It's a bit long, but it's good. And it talks about what it's like to be an introvert and how it's okay to be an introvert and how society puts so much pressure on introverts to become extroverted. And I felt that this book went that down that path a little bit. In one section, she talks about shyness. I think she even says cure, you can cure your shyness at one point. And I kind of thought, okay, maybe I'm misunderstanding what she's saying. Maybe she just means fear, fear and anxiety around social interactions, especially with new people and new experiences. Of course, we want to be more confident. We want to be more brave. We want to be able to get out there. We don't want fear to make our choices for us. We don't want fear to cripple us or hold us back. So if you have anxiety or if you have fear, make sure you talk to someone, talk to your doctor, talk to a therapist, see how you can manage your fears so that you can live the life that you want. But remember, it's okay to be introverted. It's okay to be a little shy, okay? That's okay. It's okay to be quiet. You are probably one of the best listeners in your, your social sphere. You are probably a deep thinker. A lot of times introverts, are they, they spend a lot of time thinking because they don't spend a lot of time running their mouth. So these are really, really great people. And if you are a manager of introverted people, if you're an extrovert, studies show that introverts work best when managed by introverts. So you might need to oops, kind of change that position and put an introvert into a leadership role in your company so that they can help to manage the introverts in the company in the best way because introverts are also very aware of the people who aren't getting a chance to speak because they'll let everyone else speak and they won't really step up and speak unless someone addresses them and then they probably have a lot to say they probably have a lot of insight and thoughts but they're also happy to let everyone else talk so that's why they make good leaders because they'll say oh hey Tom what, what do you think about this because Tom hasn't said a freaking word the entire t meeting. And Tom's like, whoa, I think this is the best solution. And everyone's like, whoa, Tom, with the knowledge. Introverted people are also oftentimes very funny. You know, they have this like quiet sense of humor. So it's okay to be shy. In this book, she, I feel like she vilifies it a little bit. But at the same time, she could just mean like anxiety and fear that prevents you from getting out of your comfort zone and, and growing those social skills and developing social skills and feeling like you can actually make new friendships and new relationships and not being too afraid to do that, which is obviously, you know, new, new things are part of growth, challenging ourselves. Oh, thanks, Marsha. You're so kind. You would call yourself an introvert, Matt? Yeah, yeah, you definitely are a man of few words. Introverts are also often motivated from within rather than external sources. Okay, maybe, yeah, intrinsic values are typically superior to extrinsic values in general for extroverts or introverts, just for people in general, they're gonna be long last, you're gonna have more long lasting satisfaction when you have intrinsic values like 
feeling compassionate and loving and connected rather than feeling like, or not feeling, sorry, rather than like having a fancy car or a fancy watch or, you know what I mean, experiences. They say that, you know, it can help you to feel more positive if you're feeling really negative. Here, get ready, because I don't say this often. Spending money, but not on things, on experiences. So like a vacation as opposed to diamond earrings, you know. Thank you, Marsha. Hey, I get, I borrow all, everything I talk about, I take from the books, from my teachers, from my mentors, from experiences over my life, you know. Anyone could have this information, so I appreciate the compliment. A man that supports my ambition? Um, yeah, he does support me. I appreciate that. I don't know if you mean financially. Um, I don't. I don't need to justify anything, so let me stop. Let me bite my tongue <laughs> and not read into your comment and say, thank you, I appreciate that. Hey, Sarasota, I love, oh, I love the Gulf of Florida. I wish I was there right now. Will you please go to the beach? You can wear a mask. You can exercise, whatever the rules are, and uh, I, I would just, you know, we'll live vicariously through you. You can send me pictures. That'd be great. <laughs> also, if you just go live for like 24 hours from there, that'd, be, that'd also be great. Um, yeah, and I love him too. No more Red Tide. Oh yeah, I know, the Red Tide was gone before I left. Before I moved away. That was crazy though, wasn't it? Oh my gosh. So crazy. So crazy. It wasn't as bad in Clearwater, I think, as it was down there. It didn't come up quite that far. It did, but only for like a day or two. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad after that. Alright, well that was a fun book review. <laughs> My book reviews are always so long, but I'm glad you guys enjoyed this subject because I loved this book. It was really a, an eye opener. And oh, and I didn't say this one thing that I learned from this book is my tendency to feel like if I'm not superior to someone somewhere in some arena, then I am not valuable, that I am not relevant, that I, I actually struggle with my own identity. And that's something I really want to change because I didn't, wasn't even aware of that until I was reading this. And I was like, I have that. I, I noticed, I started to think about this when I was reading um, Positive Discipline by Jane Nelson, which is a parenting book. And they said that sometimes we project things onto our kids that are our character flaws in ourselves, like a superiority complex where we feel like we always have to be achieving and excelling and working hard and being perfect, right? This perfectionist tendency. We put that on our kids and our kids might feel like they can never measure up and that is not how most parents want their children to feel and we don't like feeling that way ourselves so I've noticed it then and then reading this I was like yeah that's a mindset thing where like I feel validated that like I'm doing something good and worthy and, and valuable if I'm having these achievements and I, I realize that hey what I'm doing if I'm doing what I love to do that's valuable right? That's giving me satisfaction and commitment. I don't need tons of viewers. I don't need tons of money. I don't need anything, really. I just need to enjoy life and just keep getting better, you know? That's where value comes from for me. What, what, what does it matter to me how other people value me? You know, is that really that important? Probably not. Not nearly as important as I've given it you know, I've put, I've almost put those things over myself. Actually, just last night, I didn't go live. I went live during the day and I was going to go live again last night and I didn't because I was tired. I was irritable, PMSing. My eye was bugging me so much. I couldn't stop rubbing. It was all red and watery. And I was like feeling so bad. I was like, oh, but I know some people probably want to play games tonight. And you know, it's like, it's Saturday night. It, a lot of people are going to be wanting me to go live. And I'm like, am I really putting what other people want from me over my own health, like my own rest. Because as soon as I laid down, I fell asleep and I slept the entire night. <laughs> I was tired, you know? And it's like, okay, like give, like I, like I gotta practice what I preach, right? Give your, cut yourself some slack. Be patient with yourself. Know that not every day is gonna be a knock it out of the park, five star kind of day. Sometimes you're gonna need a little extra sleep. You're gonna need a nap. Sometimes you're not gonna be able to achieve all the goals you wanted to achieve that day and just chill out. <laughs> get some rest, you know? I don't need much. I only need a woman. You need a woman? Why is that? Money isn't everything, but I would like to know what a billionaire lifestyle is once. Okay. You should stop playing the lottery. No Q 
keep play, you could not hell anyways. I don't know what that means, but um, I mean, you have to make that choice for yourself. That's most important. Um, thank you, yeah, but I'm not perfect. We have very few infections considering we have so many nursing homes in Sarasota. Interesting. Thank you, Marsha. I appreciate that. Beautiful face and ultra persuasive. Thank you. Money isn't everything. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, no, definitely money is not everything. That's for sure. You definitely don't want to sell your soul to experience a mansion. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. Now I'm becoming a bit uncomfortable with the compliments, so I'm going to go. I appreciate that you guys are trying to compliment me, but I also don't want to get a big head, so. And I, I don't really learn from compliments. I learn more from criticism. So if someone says something about me that bothers them, then I can be like, okay, well, if it bothers that person, it might bother other people. Now, whether or not I choose to care about someone else's opinion is up to me, but I might be able to learn from it, you know? So searching for, like, grains of truth in what people say and uh, agreeing with criticism can be a pretty cool practice that I learned about in another book, so I'll stop talking about it because I'm going to do that book review as well. When I have kids, I'm going to teach them how to fail. Oh, okay. What does that mean? How to fail. You can criticize me. You can. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but apparently that guy can't because Matthew immediately muted him. Thanks, God. I'm so imperfect. I'm shaking my head. Thanks. Um, Mr. Mark Rock says, all I do is rip people off. Let me find the grain of truth in there. I can't think of a time where I've ever ripped somebody off. I once stole a ball from a dollar store as a child because I didn't know what stealing was. I'm pretty sure I brought it back though. I don't know, that's a, that's a hard one for me. I guess I'll just have to allow you to have your opinion on that. You'll have to do a better job convincing me, I guess. It was a rubber ball. It was a bouncy ball. It was like a big bouncy ball. All right. <laughs> so, 16. I think we have something like maybe 45 minutes of content left. So, I'm going to pick one of these shorter books. 45 minutes. Oh, it's so tricky to figure out what book I should review next. I'm going to get ready for... Uh, why did you say woman? I'm going to get ready for another book review. So I'll be live again in a little while. Give me time to rest my voice, drink some water, and, and write some notes on the other books. And I'll be live in just a little while. So if you haven't already, please subscribe here to my YouTube channel and follow me on Periscope. I go live on Periscope every single day, seven days a week for three hours a day. And I hope to see you back on the next juice. This has been a moment in time with Taylor. I haven't yet, Matt. I was thinking about doing that yet. I, I, um, I'm doing that next, but I have to double check. Thank you for the super hearts. Shara, Bob, Chloe, Chip, and Chris. Love you guys. Thanks for making this show possible. Huge thank you to all of you guys who supported on the website over the last 30 days. I love you guys. I couldn't do it without you. Lots of trolling tonight. It's, it's reminding me growth mindset, growth mindset. Challenge myself. Get out of my comfort zone. Stay calm. See if you can find grains of truth. I'm getting to practice all of these things. And one last time, this was a book review, discussion, and summary of Carol Dweck's book, Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. How we can learn to fulfill our potential in parenting, business, school, and relationships. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you want, you can get the book yourself. And uh, you know what? I didn't put a link to the book on YouTube, so I'm going to do that now. It'll be a link uh, that I do if you get it. I get a few cents out of it if you want the book. So I'm going to go put that on there on YouTube, and then I'll be live with another book review. Probably around 10-ish, 10-something. 10 Hi, Nick. Bye, Nick. <laughs> this has been a moment in time with Taylor. Hope to see you on the next juice.